Hi, good evening to all of you. So today is the third class of your servlet. And uh, if you can remember in the last class, we have discussed some of the very basic concepts uh, related to the servlets. Now here, uh, in last class itself, I have started writing one example related to the servlet. And in that servlet, I was trying to show you what is the and how do we write any basic servlet example and what all the different components we are associating in the servlets. So here see first thing is that as once again I am repeating here whenever you are writing any kind of servlet for any servlet program following things we need it number one is dot java file we need second one now we need that is web dot xml we need and uh, third one we need which in sub html html or short of jsp we are using these three basic things are required whenever we are writing basically any web applications we are trying to write and with the help of this apache we are we need the web server in these cases what we need is now one web server is required for us so that's the web server we are using here so we are using that as the apache tomcat here in this case this is the following things as such we are using these all are the different uh, options which is available inside this and that is what we are using in, inside this. Now more important in this case here is what is the further things which I am trying to do here see. So see first thing is anything whatever you are writing in the case of servlet anything whatever you are writing in the case of servlet what you are going to do is you are going to first associate all these things or you are going to register all these things into the web.xml all these sort of things you are going to specify inside the web.xml and when you are writing all these things into the web.xml so the different different ways the different different concepts we so first thing first tag if you will see here this is your welcome file we are writing here right in the welcome file we have written here that is the index.html we are writing here in this welcome file we are writing index.html and uh, likewise here the servlet we are writing servlet mapping we are writing and uh, again different things we are writing it inside this correct now i'll take one example here and what is that i'm trying to show you inside this here I'm just using this paint and uh, I'll just draw one diagram what exactly I'm trying to show you here and with this example you will you may understand something in a better manner so just, so just see here have a look now suppose here is our uh, some application we are having here is our some applications this is your maybe your what do you say like your logic processing which is there inside this particular application we are having here and uh, it is receiving your request handles the request from client this is the very first thing this particular application is going to do. This is the particular thing which that corresponding application is doing here. Now, at the same time guys, at the same time, what next we need is, there could be a different types of, see here, 
this is one another this is uh, something you can say that is the kind of client side things what we are having here in this so let's say it is the client side options what we are writing in this when as such i am writing this client side client side components as i am writing here this is the client side components which i am writing in client side there are different different action uh, different different you can say um, the functions we could perform here one i am writing this one here maybe one task it is second task this one is third task is this all these are the different set of tasks which we are writing in this now after writing all these tasks the first one which i am writing may be login uh, let's say i am writing here it's a very simple thing which i am writing is the login i am writing correct and uh, in the same way i'll write here the something called as the sign up i am writing here what is that sign up i am writing in this case fine and uh, maybe again that is the third options which i wanted to write here is the let's say that is the um, something called as the forget password these all are the three different options i have written here right fine now being a user what you are going to do you are just going to select any one of these options here from here you are going to select any one of the option into this cases correct you are going to select any one of this option fine this is you are you are going to select any one of this option either login or either sign up or forget password now one uh, and see why initially itself i am taking this kind of example because in current scenario we all are using we all are using different set of applications every day in our daily to daily life right all of us are using it here correct okay so when i am saying here that we all are using this different set of applications and uh, in the different forms in the different way we are using all these applications so my question is if suppose this user is clicking on login or on sign up or on the forget password or whatever xyz options that particular user is clicking so depending on the option depending on the request if uh, suppose if i will click on this login or if i'll click on sign up or if i'll click on forget so wherever i click this is one kind of request i am making it and depending on the request what i am trying to get it here or i am trying to make this request on the basis of that itself i need to get the response also on the basis of that itself i need to get the response also suppose if i am making here this request so i must have to get the response uh, according to the login means and similarly as like the sign up also as like the forget password also so first in order to do these all things means for each of these actions let's say i am calling it as an action so for any of these action either login action or sign up action or the forget password action for these all actions we need to specify something we we need to use some kind of identification thing so that on the basis of that your server which is there whoever is handling the request they can identify for what task it is 
or maybe there are the cases also that maybe one person itself is handling all these requests whatever is going here maybe these all requests are being handled by different different persons we we cannot say at this point anything here right so this all could be the scenario that everyone can use everyone can uh, process its all this all its task in its own different manner fine so for that what we are doing is here we are using the web.xml just to, to specify this all set of tasks here now see what i have done in this case first i have used one index.html and this index.html whatever as such i have written here here the three actions we have designed here what is that i have designed here the three different actions we have written here one action is maybe something called as the submit second action is again uh, something uh, called as the short of hello right and uh, similarly we are getting some more actions maybe the something called as the admin so see here if you will so we can just rename these all things i am just writing here what is the name i am changing suppose here i am writing login.jtc in the type submit you have taken it here and uh, associatively like what the value which you are taking here i am writing here that is the it's an login i have written here login i am taking here login i am taking here fine the further itself i will be uh, exceeding these applications in more now when i am saying it here what is next i am trying to write as such i said sign up i am writing and this is sign up.jtc i'm writing here this is an action see here this is a form this is a form so for this this particular one we will be calling it as an action because on the basis of this particular action whatever you have specified this particular is going to be identified you can say here so i'll write one more thing i'm writing that is the sign up in this case i am writing and uh, well inside this login i have written sign up i have written and as the same case i'm writing register i'm writing that's the register.jtc something uh, well i have written in this case fine all these different different options well i have written here and in this case also i'll write reg dot something or, or well i'll just write here the register i have written here this is the these three are the different options i have written here these all are the actions actions in the sense is these all are the tasks which i am going to perform these all are the different set of tasks which i wanted to perform here guys let's understand now now the thing is first uh, let's understand here what is that I am just trying to run this example at this time. Test servlet I have written here. So I am just trying to run this example here. Uh, run as. When I am doing run as. So run on server I am doing it. And associated with this now itself here. We are finishing it. And. Well, in this case here, you see, three actions we have got it. One, what we have got, login. Second one, we have got the sign up. And third one, what we have got, register. Fine. Here, I'll just take it on the user console. Or sorry, not console, you can say the web client, which is a web browser and all sort of things. Anything you can use it. Have a look now here. 
so i have just written all these things and i'm running it now well now the question is which one do i click it here if suppose i'm writing it login so here it is 404 at present we are getting it same time we are writing sign up okay and register all the places 404 we are getting now you just need to keep these things in mind that what here i am talking about next now look at this now here what i am doing is these all are the as such the actions what i have shown you login sign up and register associated with this now first see any actions yes yeah no it's not the uh, by default functions uh, whenever you are writing i think uh, you have not seen the last video uh, in that case i have told it is whenever you are I, i'll come to these all things at present i haven't explained it okay so i'll come to this point what is what exactly uh, in it is services destroys and all other sort of things correct okay. now now when any see here now step by step you just go it here here you have created one html and you all know the output of this particular html whatever we have written whatever we have written we know all the html of this one what output is going to be we know it in the next case here guys i need to register these all things into the web.xml and you can just match with this diagram that if suppose i click on this one so what should i do by just doing or just by clicking on that nothing will happen right so i need to write into the web.xml and that webs web.xml will take this request to that corresponding servlet servlet in the sense is you can say that is the where that processing should be handled so here i am taking the web.xml and now you say first see whenever as i am talking about uh, that is the servlet so let's uh, discuss something about this in this case now uh, we will understand one basic thing guys what is that basic thing which we are going to understand here is this is your servlet mapping what we have written correct so in this servlet mapping first uh, in first one in the case of url pattern you are just going to write one url pattern which you are receiving from the client side so here you see that here these all are the different indexes what we have written and in these different indexes one request we may receive from the login.jtc here right so i'll take this login.jtc as it is i'll copy and here i'll place it inside the uh, called as the test here in this one i'm just writing here correct now now the question here is guys this uh, and see this is the action this is the action correct so when the request is coming when the request is coming here from the client this login.jtc is there who is identifying so this login.jtc you need to write here the servlet name what you need to write servlet name so see here first i am writing here suppose login one servlet name i am writing login one servlet name i am writing here okay this is servlet mapping we have done okay now there is one another question guys that suppose if you have written the login so it will search where is the login servlet we don't have as such any login servlet at this time correct so when we are not having any login servlet so okay let's do one thing one more thing here let's run the program on the basis of this itself that what it is going to do 
let's run these all things on the basis of this itself okay so well i am just writing it here uh, running it this program again once again i am running it in front of you I, I i'll just try to run once again and uh, just have a look now see it is giving some error so one thing you remember that if there is some problem into the case of web.xml then you won't be able to run your program if any sort of problem which you are having in your web.xml then you won't be able to run your program you, you won't be able to do anything in that case right so what is the problem here the problem here is you have written a uh, URL pattern you have given one servlet name but as such this servlet does not exist inside this case so I'll do one thing here here I am writing one thing say so I'll remove this point here so well I'll write now one tag called as the servlet tag I am writing here have a look now this is the servlet tag as such I have written here in case of servlet tag here well I'll write one more thing called as servlet So this is the this is the servlet name which I am writing. I am writing here. This is the servlet name and servlet name which is the login and in this case here the servlet class. Now see here. Now remember one point. This name, this login name, whatever you have given. And here this name, this both must match. This both names, whatever you have given, it must match here. Associated with this, you are going to write one servlet class fully qualified class name. So as such, you have not written a servlet for that corresponding one. And the one what you have written, we are not going to use that particular one. What I will do now here, I'll just do one thing. What is that I'm going to do now? Say it. It is showing some problem into the web.xml. What is that problem? We will just try to short it out. Okay. Okay. So in this case now, I need to write one servlet here. So see, if you will just look at this, in this particular one, here you see, this is the SRC folder. So you can write a choice of your own servlet class. So here I'll do one thing. I'll just write, right click on this class. And just immediately after writing the here, I've just written here the servlet one, the package name, what I have given here is the com.jtc.servlet1. I have given it and associated with this, the name of the class, which I'm uh, specifying here, that could be anything I can specify here, uh, name of the class. So let's say I'm writing login, servlet i have written here login servlet in just a simple java class the way whatever you write it here right so that's the simple java class i have written here this is the simple java class that's what i am writing here okay now you see here you will find that com.jtc.servlet1 under that there is one servlet class which is the login servlet dot java has been created getting it now associated with this guys there is now here just understand few basic things few basic points you need to remember what is that points to remember keep this these all key points any servlets initially at this time any servlet you are writing that must be the subclass of subclass of see here following things it must be the subclass of either servlet it's an interface here next 
generic servlet what is these all things this is an abstract abstract class i am writing and the third one is http servlet which is also a abstract class these the these all are the as such a following things i am writing here what is that i have written a servlet generic servlet http servlet okay now if you will see the sequence so generic servlet is implementing servlet and http servlet is again extending the generic servlet fine this the, this should be very clear to you all or i'll do one thing here i'll just draw it for you see uh say for example i'll write it here so what i am writing here in this the very first one here what is that first one i am writing say here java x dot servlet dot servlet fine and uh, for this there is one specific api is guys for this there is one specific api that api you must have to build in your application how do we need to build this into your application so here i am writing the test servlet right click on this you find it out here where is the built path which is available here is there any built path is available in this okay so here is the built path is available in the build path you just go for the libraries and in case of libraries class path you click on here and add external jars you just need to go over that and once after going into that external jars here, here you can see wherever you have installed your tomcat those who haven't uh, seen that how i am installing the tomcat or how i am integrating the tomcat go for the last class uh, what already links i have given to most of you in this case now wherever you have installed this tomcat into the lib folder you will find there is one specific one which is in servlet api dot jar this particular jar file already that uh, as such it is there in my application so that is the servlet api dot jar as such i'm using it inside this case and uh, okay it since it is already there so i'll remove so see here you will find there is servlet api dot jar these file which is already available into this case i'll just apply it and i'll just write few things here inside this well after doing it now guys here so see i'll at later on i'll explain uh, that why i'm not using servlet and generic servlet i'm directly using what is that i'm using it extends it extends HTTP servlet I am going to write here. See, it extends HTTP. I am writing here HTTP. HTTP servlet. I am just going to write it here. See, mm, where we are getting. we can first what we can do is import import java x dot servlet dot servlet dot h t t p dot something we are going to write here so see here uh somewhere what java x dot So let's see. Now, in this we need to see one more thing that why we are not getting the API in this case. Fine. So in the last class already I have written here, guys. You just have you can have a look here. So in this case, it is showing one thing here. See that what it is showing means uh, some error means we are not having its source. The source is it is not there into the JDK. So I must have to build the 
path of that corresponding one so i'll just go it into this i'm building the path of that see here there is no servlet api just now uh, if you remember i have removed that here so well i'll just go again inside this now and i'll add this servlet api dot jar i'm applying all these things and after applying here something we have got it in this case well so i'm writing java x dot uh, servlet dot http say here http dot star something i have written and inside this now http servlet i have used it here fine see what i have used here so any class in servlet remember one point that any class when in servlet you are writing that must be extending the http servlet fine and when i talk about so see at present i am not writing any kind of method one of you we are asking this question what is the any destroy and uh, service method so at present i am not writing any methods here just have a look now so first is where i was i was in the web.xml so we have written here the login and inside this case now i need to provide the fully qualified class name of that corresponding one so when i am providing this fully qualified class name of this one so inside the web.xml i am writing dot what is next i am going to write now into this login servlet something i am going to write here well this is the login servlet i have written into this and uh, servlet name so uh, maybe we are doing some sort of mistake here invalid content was found servlet name okay so what i'll do now here uh, there's no mistake into this here i'm doing one thing here first what is that i'm doing now i'll write here the servlet in servlet now see first thing we are writing or we we are just going to specify this servlet for whom for this login servlet i'm going to specify so here i'll write servlet name in servlet name i'm writing login and after this now i'll write here the servlet class name oh sorry uh, it's a not servlet name I, I just need to write here the servlet servlet class the servlet class when i'm writing so remember this login servlet which is there is available into this particular package and that package i must have to specify here dot what's that now login servlet i am writing here this is what the basic things i have written now see there is no mistake into this case okay, fine i hope you are getting it now see so if any request comes and I, I will be explaining in the further classes that how container is reading the things internally, what all the other things processing uh, it is keep on doing. Uh, so that so that we will be coming out all, on all that things. But at present, the very basic things, what we are understanding is this itself, fine. So this is the identifier, means uh, uh, when any request comes from the client, so it is going to match with this URL pattern. Now this URL pattern has to be processed so who will process login will process where is the login this is the login login is giving one a fully qualified class name that this particular one is going to process this corresponding login one so in these cases here now few more things i just need to specify guys here so see okay at present i have just written here and see i am trying to show you as much as possible errors what you could get it inside this correct so see once i am now again trying to run it when i am running it see here now first i am writing in the login now now we are getting the different error which is 405 error this is error remember these all errors sometimes it could be asked in your interviews also that when exactly do we get the error called as 405 or some other error whatever error that comes into that so this is one technique which we may uh, understand in the same way in the same way i am writing on the sign up so you see here this is the 405 error so both error makes the difference so here see when i talk about login 405 error so it is asking here what is that it is asking http get method is not supported by this corresponding url well I'll go into the login servlet 
and in this particular login servlet there are few life cycle methods of the servlet what is that life cycle methods of the servlet here i'll write the for the quick revision quick points here i have written here right so in this quick, quick points servlets life cycle methods okay in this servlet life cycle method life cycle method first init method i am talking about second one service method and the third one is destroy method these three are the life cycle methods of the servlet what we have written in this case now here inside this now public void of init method i am just trying to write inside this case and inside this the parameter of this there is one specific parameter and guys at present don't uh, means ask these all questions by yourself also at present it's my just suggestion to remember it that init method when i'm writing and even i'll be showing you the what all the different you can say the apis which is available here so let's say i'm writing here only the uh, let's servlet config uh, that's the one what i have written here a file at the same time now i am writing here what is that let's say write here public void it's an service method i am writing and in this service method case the one which i am writing is the http servlet request which is req i am writing and http servlet something called as the response so this is also one option which i have written guys and meanwhile i'll write here public destroy method also i have written here now just have a look here now now if i'll do the same thing here i'm just going back and once i'll refresh this project and immediately after doing it i'm just about to click on the which one you can say that is okay so this is my server is not started here yet so i'll do one thing guys uh, I'll write here few. I, I'm just running this application, and at the same time, after running it, immediately, immediately after just doing it, immediately after doing it, the next thing what I'll just try to do here, I'm just trying to log in into this. Now you see here on your screen on your console there is no error at all there is no error in this case when i have just written all these things there is no error at all no errors it depends like at present uh for this request you are not getting any output that is a different thing but yes now here what i will do now for you one thing that whether what is the role of this init service and destroy where it comes into the picture whatever you have written for these all things what you can do here now I, I i'll do a very simple explanation for you in this case so here well i'm writing that is the system dot out dot print and in it method in which is login yeah login servlet that's what i have written here guys meanwhile what i'll do now here i'm writing service method in its uh, login which one servlet i have written in this case and associated with this itself here destroy methods in login servlet that's what i have written inside this case fine so all these just it is, it is an SOPs I have written so that something will come on the console and that's uh, one thing what you can understand that what's going on into this. Well, so uh, just what I'm doing in this case guys, I'll just write it here and run it on this and in this now, I'm running it again now, you see. So when I'm running it on the console, I'm just trying to see the output of this. There is no output as such and uh, 
on your console also okay nothing is there okay, so the, we do, we haven't got any kind of output in this case we are not receiving any sort of things but at the same time when i'm just clicking on login you see here when i'm clicking on login here init and service method is being called automatically now what is the process of calling the init and service method that we will be discussing in further classes at the same time one more thing which i'm trying to show you here is well i'm clicking again on the login so when I'm just clicking or when I'm trying to click on the login, so you see one thing that the once when I have clicked on login, so in that case, init was once being called. And at the same time, when I'm again clicking on login, once service method is being called, but again, uh, again, that is the login servlet is not being called into this case, is correct? And so this is how things are working into this case. And well, in this case is now here you see so i hope you are understanding how these all things are getting configured in these cases did you understand how it, these all things are con, uh, being configured if you are getting any questions in between that you can please ask guys if you are uh, i hope you understand. so now for you homework is what homework is that that these all other things sign up and register you will configure by your own you all are going to configure these all things by your own uh, that is sign up as well as the register you are going to configure by one meanwhile if you are getting any kind of questions any doubts you are getting it you can please ask now Thank you guys. So if you don't have any question, thank you. We will see again tomorrow. All of you remember here. When server, sorry, this is questions at present. We haven't come to that point that when servlet is being instantiated or when servlet is being destroyed. We are not coming to that point. First, what I asked you to understand here is that write the other configured things here inside that. So once you're done with that, we will automatically come to all that questions. Because once I'll start discussing all these questions, it will be difficult for you guys to understand at very beginning itself. Okay. So you just uh, do it and configure it and the rest of the things we will again discuss tomorrow. Guys, one thing. Yes, Miraj, tell me. I didn't service call कि हमने जब रिक्वेस्ट किया था तब हमारा इनिट और सर्विस प्रोसेस कॉल हुआ था ठीक है हां अभी हां बोलो अभी हम वही बात कर रहे हैं कि at present हम लोग अभी service की calling functionality या init के functionality और उस पे जा ही नहीं रहे हैं बात समझ रहे हो आप अभी इस पे जाओ ही मत अभी ये देखो कि web xml html और जो servlet class लिख रहे हो उसमें क्या connections चल रहे हैं किस तरह से एक दूसरे से वो interlink कर रहा है बिल्कुल अभी बस initially वही समझो कि आप एक welcome page display करो that is more than enough anyone else anything So guys, thank you. We'll see you again tomorrow on the same time.